Hey guys, Aussie Expat here, and I'm up early, um, and Rolex have released, just out of nowhere, their first titanium watch. Should just kill no discretion, your mind is a weapon, 11, 11, it's time for progression, oh! You could try to play, but you're never gonna be me, look the other way, what I'm doing ain't easy, but yeah. The Deep Sea Challenge, so this is a new extreme diver, more extreme than the Deep Sea, more extreme than the Sea Dweller, obviously. But yeah, the new Sea Dweller Deep Sea Challenge, 50 millimeters made out of titanium. So just a quick recap on what the dive watches are within Rolex's range so you understand where this sits. We've got the Submariner, which is a classic diver. We've got the Sea Dweller, which is more the professional diver with helium escape valve. So if you do saturation diving, when you decompress in gas, helium will expand, uh, but it won't escape necessarily and it will pop the glass off. So it's designed for professional use. The Sea Dweller, to me, represents the peak of, say, their wearable dive watches for professionals. And then we get to the Deep Sea, which really is a tribute watch for James Cameron's uh, feat of getting to the bottom of the Mariana Trench, which is called the Deep Sea Challenge. The bottom of the, the Mariana Trench, I believe, is negative 10,929 meters. So you have to get to that near 11,000 meter mark to do that. And for that feat, James Cameron built the Deep Sea Challenge to go to the bottom of Challenger Deep and Rolex helped sponsor that, made that possible, and they provided a watch called uh, the Deep Sea Challenge, which was a watch capable of being strapped to the outside of that submersible and going down. Now that thing was hilariously huge, and this titanium version is not literally, I don't think, a, a, an exact version of that. That one was like really, really big. It was never designed for anyone to wear in the slightest. It was never designed for sale. But this new model, the Deep Sea Challenge, is a better tribute to that than the deep sea. So the deep sea was created to be a tribute to that, but it was nowhere near capable. It's like 3000 meters or something like that, a third of the depth that you really needed. So the deep sea, the James Cameron watch was really a tribute watch, still very cool, very fitting. But now you have the deep sea challenge with a depth rating and get this 11,000 meters triple that of the deep sea and uh, like basically a hundred X more than the Submariner. So an absolutely insane watch, um, which makes me also think why now? So, you know, this, uh, this thing that James Cameron does, you know, it's quite old now. Deep sea has been around for quite a while. So why come out with the titanium deep sea challenge now? I think it's honestly, I think maybe it's Rolex feeling a little bit self-conscious. So earlier this year, Omega released the uh, Ultra Deep, which was actually surpassing the specs of the Deep Sea. So I'm thinking just Rolex is sort of feeling a little bit self-conscious here and had to retake the crown. Now in the past, I feel that whenever Rolex is feeling a little bit self-conscious, they tend to release their worst product instead of going their own way. An example of this, in my opinion, is the Yachtmaster 2, where it is just a really huge watch. And I felt at the time when it came out, it was just kind of, you know, the bigger watches were a trend that was coming in. They felt like, oh, we're going to do some big stuff. And it was also around uh, the time when they were making other watches bigger as well. So, for example, the Explorer 1 went to 39mm and that sort of thing. This, I think, is actually probably a good release. I mean, it completely relegates the deep sea to something, you know, a little less than collectible. I'm, I'm not exactly sure what to say. To me, the Sea Dweller is the number one watch in terms of one that you would wear as a professional. Then you get to the deep sea, which is a tribute watch, in my opinion. And then now uh, this deep sea challenge, which is like the ultimate tribute watch. But honestly, because it's titanium, it's a lot more slender, even though it is 50 millimeters, it may actually be quite wearable. So it represents maybe higher wearability than the deep sea and definitely a better tribute than the deep sea. And it's coming out at an extraordinary price. So this is $10,000 more than I think their most expensive steel watch, which I believe is the Yachtmaster 2 at about $17,000, so $9,000 more, although that has a much more complicated movement. 
What's interesting is it's a time-only movement, the 3230, which is found in a lot of other of Rolex's watches. So you're really paying for the casing here, and yep, that makes sense to me. Full titanium watch, it's they're, they're clearly positioning titanium as being above steel, which I think, yeah, that makes sense. One, it's a very special watch that sits on its own in the collection, a new piece. It is also made out of titanium. I expect production numbers on this to be very low. This is a very desirable collector's piece that may actually also be a wearable 50. All right, guys, good luck getting one. Just kill no discretion. Your mind is a weapon. 11 11 is time for progression. Oh! You could try to play it, but you're never gonna be me. Look the other way, what I'm doing ain't easy. Bloody 